So let's uh, get the world of uh, uh, commodities up and running with uh, Balan Leolito. Since she's here for the second time this week, it's good to see you again. Thank you. Since the last day we met, just Tuesday, things have changed. Yes. The world of sweet crude is a lot sweeter than four days ago. Now you're smiling a lot broader mm -hmm. because when you were here on Tuesday, we were looking at about 74 mm -hmm. there about per barrel. This morning we're looking at close to 78. Eight, yeah. The wild things move. Yeah, so on Tuesday, obviously, what Trump has done is, was beyond our expectations. We didn't expect, you know, he would actually leave the um, nuclear deal. And um, what we've seen is that this... Well, he left it. He threatened everybody yeah. on sight. He and did. I watch his eyes, I watch his eyes on TV and he said... Anyone who has any deal to do with Iran, you're going to be in soup. He's, he, it's so part everyone of his, got scared. Yeah, of course. He's, it's part of his own protectionist. You know, he's all about protect America. You know, whatever is best for America is where I'm at. So that's, you know, Trump's idea of, you know, of running a country. But mm. um, what we've seen is that, obviously, this has had an impact, significant impact on oil prices because they've increased sharply to about 70, cl very close, to, well, we might as well see $78 per barrel at this point. Mm. You know, some, some analysts are e expectant that, you know, it'll actually reach $80 a barrel, like Goldman Sachs. They have expectations oh, of Saudi it. Arabia wants. Perhaps. Yeah, of course. So, so they'll be the one smiling the most. Of course, but a, a, back, a background story to this nuclear deal, obviously it was implemented to reduce Iran's um, nuclear activity and in exchange, U.S. would remove sanctions on oil exports. Iran currently is one of the top producers of oil. You know, they produce about 2.5 million barrels per day. But now that these sanctions are back in place, what we've seen is that it's likely to reduce or half their, you know, um, production of oil to about 1 million barrels per day, which is not great and what this happens is it protects it, it kind of gives a cheating you know opportunity for most countries you know most countries that are within the OPEC deal of curbing their exports would now find a way to you know look into ways they can actually increase you know their exports and benefits from this increase in oil prices and you know the likes of Saudi Arabia even though they've mentioned severally ever since Trump made the decision to protect, you know, op the OPEC deal and make sure they don't produce as much to um, keep oil prices at that level. But we've seen that Saudi Arabia has suffered a lot with their budget cuts, you know. They have a budget, you know, gap within the, the deficit system. is deficit just amazing. Is and exactly. they are embarking on massive infrastructure, building new things. They're doing davos of the desert. Yeah. And they're doing so many things and they need, they need the money. money. Yeah. No wonder they grabbed a few uh, rich folks. So it's an anti-corruption yeah. and pumped about hundred billion dollars out of them. Yeah, but um, well, we we're not saying that Saudi Arabia would actually do this, but it's it's an opportunity. All prices are ramping up. Why 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 should I cut my production where I can when I can benefit more from it? So there's that aspect of it. What would happen to the OPEC deal in the next few months? So that's you know those are the things we need to start thinking about. But on on our own perspective, we don't expect all prices to. We think that this this rally in all prices should only be temporary. We but expect that <laughs> we're making 22. I mean. 22 million dollars yeah. extra yeah. every day. Nigeria currently earns 22 million US dollars every day sure. from this oil price rally. You want to take a pen and paper and write it somewhere. <laughs> 22 million US dollars is what we are making extra every day. Yeah. Well, we, we, we only That's need a lot to, of money. It is, it is. And it's left for the government to figure out what to do with the money. You know, the money is coming in. I thought we figured that out already. Well, figure out in the sense of, you know, the new budget that is going to be signed in, you know, how to brace ourselves for the upcome or, or the expectations of all prices even going down again. Like I mentioned, there's the risk of the OPEC deal, you know, getting, you know, ramped or getting cut off. So if that happens... What then happens to oil prices? We see oil prices back to where we... Where this, we so it's, it's this administration looks to be in a very... in a jackpot. 
President Buhari and his team, isn't it? Yeah. Oil prices ramping, the Niger Delta is quiet, the vandalization activities seem to be at a zero level. Yeah. So it looks like they're just cruising along. Yeah, that's time to take a very good advantage of what's happening at this point. I, I, I wish I'm in that position. I can use extra $22 million every day <laughs> uh, if, if that is where it is. But uh, if we sidestep, if we push that a little bit to one side, what other, what other economic issues are, are there for the Nigeria's uh, consumer market that we need to focus on uh, as, we, as we get on the rest of the week? Okay, so some of the burning issues. The good news is that, you know, we've seen exports from Tenkan port increase by about 22 billion um, naira. Um, from Q1 compared to 7 billion naira in Q1 2017, which is great in the sense that we didn't have this data before and this data only suggests that we're actually making progress when it comes to exporting and cr making our balance of trade, you know, creating a, a good balance of trade within the system. So that's, that's one, uh, one um, good news that we're, we're actually very happy about. Another is that power is still, very, is still very low. We're still facing, you know, like I mentioned on Tuesday, the same gas, although ga the gas constraints we've seen has actually reduced, but we're still facing the gas and grid constraints that we, we see in the market. So those are some of the issues that we, um, or some of the important issues that we're actually focused on. Mm. Uh, if, if we put the, uh, uh, the, the good news vis-a-vis -vis the, the, the bad news, petrol subsidy is still one key issue, one elephant in the room that would just uh, put some coverings over and hope one day the elephant will be quiet. But this is something we're just postponing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, you folks say this is not sustainable. It's not. All prices keep ramping up. You know, we've, at a time when we decided, okay, Technically, we're removing the subsidy. All prices were not at this level. Now, we're, all prices are way higher than what it used to be before. These, the cost of importation has increased significantly. At this point, I, I was reading um, that NNPC is the only or one of the sole importers and ex, um, importers of um, oil, and it only suggests that it's becoming more more significantly important for them to look into this aspect of subsidies within the oil industry. And also, they, there's the issue of smuggling as well. You know, instead of importing and using it to benefit the domestic markets, we're seeing markets as, you know, smuggle this oil, um, so petrol finish, products. They finish, they finish up, uh, petrol products, petrol, diesel, yeah. maybe kerosene and all that. Yeah, they, they're smuggling them outside. And obviously, it's to benefit more from it because we have a cap on our oil or our petrol um, prices. So it's it's... It's the impact of what we're not actually f what, what we're not actually doing within the economy. A good good news that to our agri exports uh, is, in, is increasing. I'm sure perhaps a bit of part of the background to that is the ease of doing business yeah. uh, and, and whatever, no and matter how bad. Yes, and well. the exchange rate. Uh, 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 stability uh, and, and efficiency of that market yeah. that has been. Uh, so this is some good news. Thank you to the central bank and, and, and to the executive order. But if you look at the global uh, commodities market space, there are still a number of issues, even within the West Africa zone, uh, where Ivory Coast is battling, uh, uh, trying to find a way out, uh, reduce production, reduce our production so the prices could go up. Then we have this disease issue. We haven't been really been able to figure it out. Is this something that you think could? Yeah, um, as of this morning, it seems like they're actually finding ways to tackle the disease issue, the caterpillar um, infestations within their um, produce. Um, they, they, I, Ivory Coast, they solely depend on, you know, cocoa exports for, to run the economy. So any, any little issue they have within, you know, that industry, they always make sure they, they, they face it and tackle it. We also know that Mars Wrigley is trying to, or Mars Wrigley Confectioner is also trying to create gene genetically modified you know, cocoa seedlings, which should actually increase, you know, um, cocoa supply. That would only have an imp a negative impact on prices in the sense that once supply has increased, we're finding new ways to boost supply without or disease resistant, you know, cocoa produce. What then happens is, you know, all price of cocoa prices would actually decline. Currently, cocoa prices are about 2000 over $2,700 um, per metric ton, $2,700 per metric ton. So, you know, those are the issues Ivory Coast is facing. But as of today, I think they're actually solving the issue of the, of, of the pest infestation. Yeah, that, that, that looks like one good uh, a story there. But again, hope we can handle the same thing if it happens here. Uh, what else is moving here and why I'm trying to find out? Um, if corn, uh, wheat, and sugar are some of the top stories for 
domestic uh, producers to think about as we get onto a different season, not just in Nigeria, but also in a number of, of economies of countries around the world. Yeah, so wheat, wheat and um, corn, once we have a situation where prices are declining, it actually benefits us because it's part of you know, our imports. Um, currently, wheat prices are down, corn prices are up. Those two commodities are mainly driven by the weather conditions in mainly US and Russia, one of the two top producers of um, wheat. As of today, um, corn wheat production is actually increasing favorable weather in the US and all that. But for corn, it's that there's kind of a delayed plantation season when it comes to corn. So that has just affected the prices temporarily. But usually wheat and corn prices move in the same direction, except there's a significant you know, external factor that affects the prices individually. Regarding sugar, sugar is, like I mentioned earlier sometime in, uh, on the program, sugar, over time, you've seen people's attitudes to sugar change people's consumption of sugar reduced over time. There are more substitutes to sugar. Um, and also, sugar prices in or sugar supply within India and Pakistan has increased significantly, mainly due to the subsidies on the pre, um, sugar producers within those countries. And also, um, Australia, although a major... Um, a major supply of sugar mm. is also facing the heat when it comes to the sugar prices. The sugar prices have declined significantly. And um, now, prices are actually below cost of production within Australia. Now, so if, if you have sugar prices down by 0.61%, you have every reason to... To, 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 to be worried. Yeah, of course. It's now down, it's now way below cost of production. So that has caused question within Australia. I think they're trying to find ways to kind of help, you know, the sugar business within their country. Yes, that looks very interesting. If we can get more sugar here at lower prices, I think the folks who want to go into sugar production in Nigeria would not mind any, uh, would not mind some measure of subsidy from the government to help them also produce. Uh, we're subsidizing petrol, but, but we need to subsidize. Maybe time we'll move to subsidize other things. Agriculture. Other than, yeah. than petrol. Yeah. Uh, because you yeah, put a petrol in the generator uh, just to cool down a little bit mm. in a very hot uh, uh, afternoon. But again, we need food on the table, we need food in the stomach, we need nutrition for the children, we need to feed uh, a, a population and, and create more jobs. So maybe we just cut the petrol uh, subsidies by half and uh, half of it. About 145 billion naira significant, per year. Significant yeah, if, if we put 70 billion or 75 out of that in the hands of uh, the farmers and the value chain uh, every year, I'm sure they will say a big thank you. Yeah, of course. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, you're not the one giving this up. <laughs> just saying thank you for coming on the program and uh, hope to see you, uh, your team, uh, sometime later next week. Bolaleo Lutosin, who is one of the economists and research analysts at. Um, Financial Derivatives Company.